Look, Tech, my business cards finally came. <laughs> you, you ordered the business cards, George? 10,000 of them. <laughs> I wanted you and Joanna to have the first two. George Utley. No address? No phone number? No occupation? What's the point? Everybody in town knows where I live and what I do. <laughs> well, then, then why do you need a business card, George? It impresses the babes, Dick. <laughs> Hello, old man. How have you been? Pretty... Pretty good, young young man. <laughs> who 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 are you? Why I'm Scooter Drake. Who? Oh, Scooter Drake. Uh, Stephanie and I met him at a, a snobby party in, in New York. <laughs> not 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 that not that you were that snobby. Really, I thought I was perfectly snobby. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi, I'm Joanna Loudon, and that's George Utley. My card. <laughs> George Utley. Well, if I ever need one, you can be found here. Yep, lovely. Steffi about. Uh, Steffi Scooter's here. <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm in an Archie comic? <laughs> Scooter Drake. Hi, I thought I smelled old money. <laughs> Try as I may, I can't rid myself of that blasted smell. I do hope it doesn't offend. Well, it was pretty bad when you walked in, but I, I can, <laughs> can hardly notice it now. So where's your darling little girlfriend, Libby? Oh, that's right. It's spring liposuction time. <laughs> I'm afraid Libby's left me for another. Another what? Another man, George. That's not what the gossip mongers are saying. Oh, well, what brings you to Vermont? Well, since Libby left me, I've been feeling a bit under, so I thought I'd motor on up here and do some shopping. That often cheers me. Scooter, Vermont is hardly the place to shop. Unless you're interested in maple candy, I suggest you try Paris. Actually, I, I've had this urge to buy a quaint New England inn. Then, then don't go to Paris. <laughs> what kind of inn are you in the market for? Oh, dear. Is that something I should have thought about? Well, it, it took us a year to find the Stratford. We did research, talked to people, drove all over. Well, I'd like to have mine by nightfall. <laughs> Joanna, you can help Scooter find an inn. I mean, aren't you, like, in real estate or something? So you do pay attention when I talk about my life. Sometimes I can't shut it out. <laughs> if you're really interested, I'd love to help. We could go look at my listings right now. Splendid. Uh, come on, Stephanie. Oh, I, if there's two I like, you could flip the coin. Or you can buy both. My, you are a help. <laughs> Boy, imagine buying an inn to get over being depressed. When I'm blue, I rent It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. <laughs> and, that, and that cheers you up, George? Yeah, for a while. Then I think about all the actors in the movie who are dead, and I get blue again. <laughs> hi. Oh, hi, Michael. Shh, shh, shh. I'm on the lamb from my ex-lamb chop. It, it's okay, Michael. She's in the dining room. Oh, all right. You, you can say my name. I don't think I need to anymore. <laughs> How's the uh, job hunting going? Vic, I've decided to keep my nose out of other people's businesses and start one of my own. One that requires minimal capital and yet will enable me to afford food again. <laughs> <laughs> Watch. <laughs> You're going to pull taffy? Uh, Michael, are, are you saying you're going to be a mime? You know what they say? Everybody loves a mime. No, everybody loves a clown. People try to run over mimes. <laughs> well, nobody's going to maim this mime. <laughs> Michael, are, are you sure this town is ready for a mime? I, I don't think they've ever... 
they've ever seen one before. That's right. They might mistake you for the village idiot. <laughs> he used to pull on invisible taffy, too. Scooter, we might have better luck if we see some of these inns in person. Well, I agree. I, I always like to caress the things I buy. Well, good. I'll go call some of the inns and tell them we're coming. Maybe you can fondle the Henderson place. <sighs> you know, just the thought of buying some place is lifting my spirits. Well, the way I see it, there are four stages to breaking up. First denial, then shopping. <laughs> Then hating the other person's guts so much you would like to see them fry in the flames of eternal hell. <laughs> then more shopping. <laughs> I'm at the third stage with Michael. Would you like some more coffee? I mean, as grotesque as it all is, I am the maid. You shouldn't feel grotesque. My great-grandfather used to say there's no shame in any job. As long as you do it well, it inspired the workers in his sweatshops to keep plugging away. <laughs> Until they were old enough to go to school. <laughs> Sounds like he was a great man. He was a monster, actually, but an absolute delight at parties. <laughs> Listen, I've got an idea. After I buy my inn, why don't we go out and celebrate our freedom from Libby and Michael? What's the best restaurants in town? Uh, Maison Hubert, but... I could never go back there again. That's where I had my last horrible date with Michael before he dumped me. Did I mention that I'd like to see him fry in hell? I believe you did, but you know the old saw. When you fall off your polo pony, remount and use the whip. <laughs> It, it could be so many things. No matter how much you clean, the stuff keeps coming back. Has it occurred to you that it's supposed to be here and we're tampering with God's plan? Who, who signs your, your paychecks, him or me? Oh, how was in shopping? Scooter didn't like anything he saw. The inns we looked at were all so, um, red. Well, couldn't you show him something in a different color? Haven't either of you ever heard of paint? That would be like buying a sweater in the wrong color and then dyeing it. <laughs> One certainly wouldn't do that. <laughs> Joanna might. <laughs> I wish you could find me something like this. Well, the Stratford is pretty run-of-the-mill compared to some of the places I've shown you. I wouldn't call it run-of-the-mill. <laughs> Dusty, maybe, but... I mean, that's God's doing. Everything here is so perfect, though. The, the, the fixtures, the fireplace, even Stephanie posing over there looks absolutely perfect. You should see this place when the morning sun reflects off my hair. <laughs> People say it's breathtaking. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a million dollars for it. You want, you want to buy the Stratford for, for a million dollars? Ooh, you've got the art of haggling down to a science. <clears throat> All right, a million three, take it or raise it. Uh, what? I left myself open for that one. All right, a million five. Well, I, I know it's a lot of money, but I'm, I, I'm not sure I can, I can bring myself to, to sell this place. If we did, we'd be set for life. And do you have any idea how much my commission would be? <laughs> Joanna, the, the seller pays the commission. You'd be paying yourself. Who cares? The important thing is it'll put me in the Million Dollar Club at the office. I'll get a pin. <laughs> oh, well, let's dump this place if it, if it means you're getting a pin. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, hi, George. Listen, we need your advice on something. Uh, Scooter has offered to buy the inn, and uh, we're trying to decide whether or not to, to sell. Sell a Stratford? You can't. The Stratford is like a home to us. George, it, it is a home to us. 
Well, my advice is don't sell. He's offered us a million five. Then my advice is sell. <laughs> See, Dick, George thinks we should sell. George isn't everybody. I like to think I am. <laughs> of course, it is ironic. I live here my whole life, and the day I get my business cards, we move. <laughs> jo Joanna, why, why are you so quick to unload this place? I, I thought you, you loved it as much as I do. I do. We have seven years of wonderful memories here, but if somebody is crazy enough to offer us that kind of money, we ought to be crazy enough to consider it. Hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. Hi, fellas. We heard there was a Scooter Drake here. We grew up with a Scooter Drake, and we was wondering if it was one and the same. My guess would be no. Does this Scooter Drake have a pineapple birthmark on his right buttock? Pineapple. Um, pineapple. No. Listen, fellas, Dick has a question for you. Uh-oh, Daryl. Pop quiz. It's, uh, it's, it's like this. Uh, we've been offered uh, a million five for, for the inn. Dino might! <laughs> One of us uh, feels that uh, we should take it, and one of us isn't so sure. Daryl wants to know who the jerk is who isn't so sure. <laughs> I, I don't think any purpose would be served by, by naming names. <laughs> it's Dick. You see, Dick, the fellas think we should sell. Even they know a million five is a lot of money. A million five? We thought you said a million flies. Good evening, Hubert. Mademoiselle Vanderkulin, I did not think I would be seeing you again. <laughs> Is this another loser du jour? Here you go, old French chap. <laughs> That, that loser remark, <laughs> Mademoiselle and I, we make with the petite. <laughs> Follow me, mes amis. For you, the finest table in the house. <laughs> oh, Javel, did you miss me as much as I missed you? They say sometime late at night she cries out for you. <laughs> Hubert, I'll bring us a bottle of Dom Perignon, please. But of course. <laughs> Howdy, bottle of Dom Perignon, too sweet. Howdy. This is the way it used to be with Michael. People scurrying at our commands. How I miss the simple pleasures of life. My apologies for the delay. Oh, seven seconds isn't really long. And now that you've established a time, you'll have something to beat. Would you like to see the menus now? Later, Henri. <laughs> A toast to Libby and Michael. May they forever be part of our past. Good riddance. <laughs> What is that? I think it's a mime screaming in the rain. Let's applaud. Perhaps it'll go away. It worked. Well. <laughs> what have we here? So you couldn't wait, could you? 
I thought mimes were supposed to be fairly quiet. <laughs> Run along now, you wet, white-faced street performer. <laughs> I know what's going on here. Come first. I'm a mime, not the village idiot. Michael. In black and white. <laughs> this is Michael? Well, he's not at all as I'd pictured. How do you do, young mime? Scooter Drake. <laughs> So, I see you found yourself a new boyfriend, and he's so cute! Why, thank you. So sweet of you to notice. Look, we're only having dinner. Scooter and I are just friends. Oh, sure. Steffi and Scooter sitting in a tree. K I S S I N G. I do not like memes. You people are the reason I left France. <laughs> I have as much right to be here as anyone else. Just because I have no money in my hat is no reason I should be treated like garbage. <laughs> and you, you two were out there watching me for 20 minutes and you didn't give me a damn nickel. <laughs> what, because I'm a mime, you thought I wouldn't say anything? <laughs> he thought you were the village idiot. <laughs> Well, could the village idiot do this? Michael, stop it! I can't hear you, Steffi. Can't you see I'm in a box? <laughs> Michael, you're dripping makeup on my purse. Oh, sorry, my career is a little messy. <laughs> Not all of us have a job where we get to work. Oh, my God. Is that a $2,000 suit? Well, not counting the trips to Italy for the fittings. I want that suit! Michael! I want that suit! I deserve it! I worked hard! I did everything right! <laughs> and now, I'll never get to have a suit like that. Never! <laughs> Give it to me! Give it to me! You can have my leotard! Just let me have the suit! Michel, Richard! Dispose of this meme! You haven't seen the last of Mike Laris. I'll be back, if not as a mime, then as a human mannequin. <laughs> or as a dog-faced boy. <laughs> How did everyone enjoy the show? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've called about just about everyone I know, and, and they think I should sell. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure I want to. A, a million five. I, I, I have what for brains? <laughs> well, if, if, if that's how you feel, love, love to Dad. mom say? Uh, she's, uh, she's, uh, she's on the fence. <laughs> oh, how was dinner at Maison Hubert? <laughs> <laughs> did, did she have the clams? <laughs> Actually, we, we, we had a rather unpleasant experience with her estranged beau. He's an extraordinary mime, visually, don't get me wrong, but he... Well, he tends to undercut his performance by crying and screaming incessantly. That's, that's the worst kind of mime. So, any decision about selling me in? Uh, my, my answer is, is yes. And, and no one, not, not, even, not even my mother, has, has influenced me in this decision whatsoever. Mark. Well, old man, I'll have my people call your people. I, I, don't, I don't have any people. <laughs> Why, I thought everybody had people. Oh, well, with the money you make, you can buy some people. <laughs> Scooter, it's for you. Libby Harcourt. How did that conniving she-devil track me down? You know, Joanna, it just hit me. We're, 
we're going to have money. I know. If we wanted, we could afford a Volvo station wagon. <laughs> and, and I won't have to buy that, that Civil War chess set one piece at a time. <laughs> Oh, what the heck with that? With a million and a half dollars, I can, I can buy every pewter thing the Franklin Mint ever made. <laughs> well, <laughs> mustache, Libby wants me back to wrap around her little finger again. Ah, oh, the simple pleasures of life. Having a fair-haired maiden by one side and 310 million to roll around in. D don't, don't you mean 308.5? <laughs> you are still buying me in. Well, I should think not. The witch is back, so the inn is out. <laughs> Hi. I'm Larry. This is my brother, Daryl. Scooter Drake? Larry! Daryl! <laughs> Daryl! <laughs> oh, dick, dick, dick. You should have looked closer at Scooter's right butter. <laughs> what are you doing here? I thought you'd be in Palm Beach for the polo season. Normally I would, but I had this urge to buy a New England Inn. <laughs> Uh-oh, Daryl, he's been shopping. That could only mean that you and Libby have split up yet again. <laughs> You've reconciled, dear Larry. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with you two. <laughs> Listen, why don't the three of you motor down with me to the city? The crowd would love to see you again. You know, we haven't been to New York since the opening of Phantom. <laughs> Come on, Daryl. Let's go choose to see who gets to ride in the trunk. Thank, thank you. <laughs> well, my scoot, hence the name. Do give Steph a buy. How, uh, wait, how, how, about, how about a million three? I'll, I'll, even, I'll even throw in the handyman. He, he comes with his own business card. <laughs> We just lost a million and a half dollars. Yeah, but, you know, look at it this way. You know, it's, it's the simple pleasures of life. A fair-haired maiden by your side and, uh... A million, million flies to roll around with. <laughs>